G'day guys, what's going on? So today we're looking at two keyboards from a company called Sky Lung. It's the GK980 and the GK75. These are mechanical keyboards that actually are quite affordable. They're very high quality, like getting these things out of the box, they actually feel a lot more expensive than what they're actually going for on the website. And until Skylung had reached out to me, I'd never heard of this company before. So today I'm gonna to take you through both keyboards, show you what I think is so impressive about them, um, obviously give you a sound typing test and all that good stuff so you guys can decide if these keyboards are right for you. So if you enjoy the content, don't forget to chuck out a like, get subscribed, and let's begin. So starting off, we've got the GK75, which is a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard with Glacier mechanical switches. I've got the ones that are linear. These are hot swappable switches as well. The keycaps are double shot PBT keycaps, so they feel really, really nice to type on. And you can get this in a USB Type-C or USB Type-C plus Bluetooth plus 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Um, the one I've got is just the USB Type-C version, and I really do like this keyboard. The color combo, this is the titanium gray, so it's kind of like an an orange white situation and overall I actually think is a really nice looking keyboard and only goes for about 110 Australian dollars. Then we've got the GK980. So this is a 98 key. It basically includes a number pad. It's a little bit shorter than a full width full size keyboard, but again uses those Glacier hot swappable switches, double shot PBT keycaps. This one though is USB Type-C, Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz via a dongle and actually also feels really, really nice. The keys are slightly different in terms of their shape and their profile. So the actual keys are a little bit closer together, but overall both of these keyboards, the GK75 coming in at about $110, $120 and then the GK980 I believe only coming in at about $170 Australian dollars and that includes shipping which takes about five to seven business days. Now, something else that really stood out to me with both of these keyboards is the fact that there is this optional knob that you can go ahead and install in place of one of the mechanical switches on the top row of the keyboard. So either on the top right or the top left, depending on the model of keyboard that you buy. On the GK980, they actually include one pre-installed plus two extra knobs in the box. You can actually have a maximum of six knobs to do different things. And there is actually software as well. So you can go ahead and program and set those dials up or those knobs up to do different actions, whether it be play, pause, next track, previous track, um, forward and back in an application or copy and paste. You can do all of that through the software, which is downloadable from their website. But the fact that you can go ahead and customize your keyboard and have it really set up for gaming content creation, productivity or maybe a mixture of all three is a really really nice touch and another nice touch is the GK980 with the space bar they actually give you the option of having it in a split keyboard arrangement so if you just want to have one big long space bar you can do that or if you want to have it split into three they actually include the assembly the caps the switches and everything that you need to make that possible and it is really really easy to do so so again considering the price point of both of these keyboards that the fact that there is an element of DIY to both of them so you can customize them a little bit is really nice and if you go onto their website there's heaps of options in terms of keycaps, dials, switches so you can really make it look and feel exactly how you want. Now let's talk about the size and weight of both of these keyboards starting with the GK75. The length of that one is 322 millimeters, the width is 141 millimeters and the height is 31 millimeters tall and weighs about 960 grams, although I will say it actually feels a lot heavier than that. The GK980 is 394 millimeters in length, allowing for that number pad of course, 144 millimeters in width and only about 44 millimeters tall. The weight is about 1.2 kilograms. And again, when you pick up both of these keyboards, they actually feel extremely strong, extremely rigid, high quality materials, and actually feel heavier than what they're advertising on the website. Now the bottom side of the keyboard is actually pretty similar on both. You've got some rubber feet so it doesn't move around and slip around too much while it's on your desk. You've got the USB Type-C connection on the left hand side and there is a channel there so you can route the cable a few different ways and then you've got that angled feet where you can set it up at a 4 degree, 7 degree or 10 degree angle so you can get the ergonomics and the angle of the keyboard just right. 
Now, the one slight difference that you might have noticed is that the GK980 has a storage spot for that dongle for the 2.4 gigahertz mode if you want to use it that way. You've also got a switch to go between USB Type-C to Bluetooth to 2.4 gigahertz if you want to go ahead and use it with different computers. That could be really, really handy. I would have liked to have seen that switch though, maybe on the front of the keyboard somewhere where it's a little bit easier to get to if you want to switch, I guess, computers on the fly without having to turn the keyboard upside down. I imagine if you've got the GK75 though in that USB Bluetooth 2.4 version if you opted for that the bottom of the keyboard would look pretty much the exact same. The one thing that is consistent though with the switches is you do have a Windows and Mac switch so if you want to go ahead and change the keyboard layout and how it behaves with different operating systems you can do that again on the fly but I wish I could have access to that switch on the uh, on the top side of the keyboard where it might be hidden but still accessible to make things a little bit easier. Now I do really love both of these keyboards and how they sound so what I'll do is I'll leave you for a minute so you can listen to them, make a decision for yourself and maybe let me know in the comments what you think. So it's time now for my personal opinion, my conclusion, the review to the GK75 and GK980 and you'll have to take it from someone who's just an average everyday user who's starting to get to know more about what makes a good mechanical keyboard compared to one that is terrible and honestly I really think it comes down to the feel, the touch, the materials, the sound, the feedback that you get from a mechanical keyboard and I know a lot of you guys really want that nice thocky sound absorbing keyboard and both of these, the GK75 and the 980 feel and sound really really good and feel far more expensive than what they're actually charging you know $120 or $180 respectively in Australia for a keyboard that offers you so much in terms of the DIYness, the things that you can do to it the customizations the different keycaps the switches then you've got the software which I think could still use a bit more polish it's not perfect but it does the job and then you've got you know how they sound and when you're typing on them um, they just feel really 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 good 
Personally, I like the GK75 with the OEM keycap profile more. I just felt like my keys could sort of navigate and I wasn't mishitting too often compared to that GK980, which has what's called a, a GK5 profile, which is a little bit closer together. So sometimes I felt like my fingers were sort of um, hitting two keys at once, or maybe I was not hitting the key that I intended to to type on but after spending about an hour or so using both of them quite heavily to type up scripts and to do emails and all that kind of stuff I really couldn't notice too much of a difference I think though that for for gamers the GK75 is probably the way to go for someone who wants to be able to do it all and have a fairly compact um, package that is really good value the GK980 might be the way to go but again both keyboards are really, really good. If you don't need the number pad, get the GK75. If you do, get the 980 and um, and mess around with the knobs and all the different keycaps that you can get from Skylung. So, guys, that's all I have to say about both of these. Really do like them. Think they're great value. Go and check them out for yourself. If you have any comments, questions, maybe there's something that I missed, please let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you guys. Links to everything down in the video description as well. Come and chat with me on Discord or on Instagram, Facebook, whatever it might be. And until the next one, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.